Hello everyone, Shiki here again. This time we're going to be doing a mid-season kind of review. I'm going to be talking about the shows, what I've liked about them so far, how I thought they have been, and if I have any gripes with them so far. We're just going to go down my list in, I guess, alphabetical order here. Um, keep in mind, some of them aren't necessarily halfway through, like a couple of cuckoos and um, the summertime show, but it's halfway through the season in general. Most shows are reaching their um, uh, apex or their midpoint, I guess you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this isn't going to be a horribly long video. I hope not. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go through a couple minutes each, maybe less than a minute on each, and then uh, just kind of discuss that. Uh, I'm not going to bring up a photo of it or anything, so just kind of Google it if you want. Or just look back at the previous videos and be like, oh, this is the one he's talking about. Anyway, we're going to start with a couple of cuckoos. So this one was the one with the uh, guy and girl who were separated, or not separated, they were exchanged at birth, and they meet their real parents and find out that they are engaged to each other and kind of how they go. I did read the manga of this already, I believe. Um, this was the one I wasn't sure if like, I dropped it or if I caught up to it or what happened, but it's still cool. I like it so far. And it's, it's been an okay journey. Next, we have Aaron's son. This is the uh, girl who's not expressive and she's quiet. Um, she still wants to like friends and stuff like that. Think Komi-san, but like this is a smaller, not as beautiful girl. And also the main character, the guy who's uh, Raido, he also wants more friends, except he has kind of like a scary face and he's really tall. So uh, they kind of find friendship with each other and do various things, and try to communicate with each other better. And it kind of just goes through their daily life of them doing various things, and uh, it has been quite joyful. There are times when I don't necessarily like what's happening, or I think whatever's happening is a little bit cringy, so I just kind of got to, like, fast forward through the show a little bit at that particular moment in time. But other than that, I think it's been a, a joy to watch. The next one is uh, The Aiman. It's the show where the uh, musician's son comes back home to uh, the family sweet shop to take it over after he, you know, hears that his father got injured. Uh, however, his parents have taken in this younger girl who was kind of like abandoned by her father, and her father was a musician as well. So that's why uh, in the beginning she mistakes the main character for her father and whatnot. Uh, it basically goes over their relationship uh, and their daily life as he attempts to take over the confectionery business and she kind of moves through her trauma and uh, grows up as a child uh, without a father. Essentially, he's supposed to be the like stand-in for her father is what the kind of setup is. So it's just been them kind of getting closer and closer together. Real cute, real, real nice, and... Uh, Quite touching at times. Brings a little tear to your eye, you know. Been pretty great. Next up, we have the um, greatest demon lord anime. I forget the exact name for it, so I'm going to look it up real quick. It's the greatest demon lord is reborn as a typical nobody. That long one. Anyway, <clears throat> this one is good. I like it. It's funny. It's, it's funny, it's got good action, it is beautiful. It's essentially, the, the main character was this demon lord who ruled over everything, who was really strong, but people feared him because of it, and so he didn't have any friends. So he decided he was going to reincarnate himself so that he could make friends. He'd be like, I'm a nobody. So he's reborn into like this, this nobody family and tries to make friends. But he's like really, like overbearing about it and so he doesn't get friends until uh, he meets this girl uh who is named uh, i think irene i believe her name is or irena the actual name they just say irene i think the anime anyway he meets her and they uh, you know have uh, a friendship which is quite nice and so then they go to uh, magic academy where he meets another girl and they have friends with it's it's a harem you know how it goes anyway the girls are cute the magic is awesome. The action is beautiful. 
and I quite in enjoy it. I don't really have any complaints about it. Um, it's been quite fun to watch. Neatly deedly do. Uh, so next up, we have Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. It is the romance one that came out. I think it kind of got delayed a little bit into the season, so it's not quite up to episode six like the other ones are, I don't think. Uh, but regardless, it's a cute show. It, uh, it follows around this pink-haired girl, as you can pink-haired girl and the, uh, the kind of purple-haired guy uh, who are in a relationship. The guy has very bad luck. Like, stuff falls on him. He falls. He trips. You know, gets hit by things. And his girlfriend, who is cute, but she's also really cool because she protects him and is really, like, lovely to him. It's a very cute, heartwarming romance show where they, uh, if you want to see two people in love and like having a great time, this is, this is going to be it, I feel. Hopefully, they don't do the thing that a lot of romance do at the end where they're like drama, nonsense, because it's really just them being a cute fucking couple and I love it. And I hope it stays that way. Yep. Next up, we have Trapped in a Dating Sim. The world of Otome games is tough for mobs. This is the isekai where the main character had to play through this Otome game for his sister who was, I guess, blackmailing him or something. And uh, he does it, exhausts himself to the point where he trips down some stairs, dies, and gets reincarnated into the Otome game as a side character. Um, so as a side character, he uses his knowledge to become basically the most overpowered character or guy in the game or show or world, you should say. And basically uh, tries to find a wife, as it does, because it's a uh, matriarchal society where men are kind of treated shitty, where uh, they can be married off to women to just have them be killed off to get their inheritance. Anyway, I absolutely love this show. Because the main character is hilarious. Because he will just, like, bully the main characters of the game who are, like, all these like princes and upper nobility and good-looking men. And he just, like, shits on them all the time. He's really arrogant and pisses everyone off. And I just, I just love how he does not care and doesn't give a damn as the story progresses. Because he knows he's the strongest person. And, like... He actively tries to get uh, thrown out as being a noble so he can just find like a normal wife and have a normal life and not have to worry about anything. Like the uh, nobility bullshit. And so it's been great. I've loved every episode of it. And it, it's, it's going to keep getting better and better. They do do a couple things different from the manga. Um, one of them being obviously... Uh, if you've read the manga and whatnot, you'll know that the main character doesn't quite realize in the beginning that the girl named Marie, who shows up and gets the prince harem going, um, he doesn't realize that she is like a someone who also got reincarnated into the world. He has a suspicion, but like really quick in the anime, he's like, yep, that person, they also came from my world and know about this game. Yep. So that's just kind of one thing that's kind of different that I thought about, but it's not a bad thing. It, it fits. It's barely mentioned. It's whatever. I love it. I really want to see how this plays out because it's going to be a hilarious show. The next one is the... Uh... Excuse me. My uh, throat decided to kill itself for some reason. <laughs> it's the uh, anime where the main character is a hero. I think it's... Uh... The one where he quits heroing. What the hell's the name of it? I'm quitting heroing. That's just the name of it. The main character is a hero who uh, basically defeats the, the demon lord. And instead of everyone like praising him and throwing him a party, humanity hates him, despises him because he's way too powerful. And as a result, he quits being a hero and joins the Demon King army. Uh, so far, it's, it's literally just been him like helping the, the demon lord generals to do their jobs and to build the Demon Lord army, essentially. 
And uh, we kind of gain some insight about why the demon army invaded in the first place and all the stuff that's going on there. It's really kind of a, uh, almost like a slice of life in a way. There's not a whole lot of like action and fighting that you would expect from a uh, fantasy world like this. It's mostly him just going around, helping the generals do like paperwork, helping them with logistics, um, this kind of stuff. And, you know, having one-on-one -on -one chats with uh, some of the generals to be like, hey, man, what's, what's bugging you? That kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I'm, uh, I'm really hoping at some point they're going to go back to, like, the human kingdom and just, like, beat the humans down. Because that would be just sweet. Anyway, next up, we have RPG Real Estate, which uh, is, as it sounds like, it's a fantasy world in which... The main characters are real estate agents who help people find their homes. Now, in the beginning, when I first did my first impression of this one, I was like, it seems like it's just going to be them going around finding their homes. And, uh, oh, oh, I was right. It was. Uh, but it's not as bad as the, uh, for example, uh, the, the dragon anime from last season or a couple seasons ago where the, the demon, uh, the dragon was trying to find a home. Uh, anime where it was like literally just him going to different homes and being like this home's too big this home's too small this home's too purple and blah 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 anyway this one's actually kind of interesting because it's them not only like exploring the world and being like oh this is a cool house and like talking to the clients and, um having interesting adventures uh it does a cool in like a, a neat way like they'll uh go on this like adventure or something and they'll find a house or they'll be sold a house and it'll have, you know, like ghosts in it, for example. And then they'll be like scared of the ghosts for a while. It's got more of like a slice of life feel to it instead of just like them showing around clients constantly. Um, for like the, the last episode, for example, they went to a beach and uh, it was kind of cute there. They had a nice little thing. And uh, yeah, it also has really like Yuri undertones with uh the black haired girl and the uh, blonde haired girl they they are totally in a relationship and you cannot tell me otherwise they were a they are a hundred percent in a relationship even though they have an apartment separate rooms bedrooms like they're totally doing it on the side 100 percent. anyway it's a good show nothing i have not not liked too badly. Next up, we have the Skeleton Knight in another world anime, which uh, is just mwah, mwah, like chef's kiss to this show. I love it because it's uh, it's one of those shows where it's not like I'm going to like find a way to get home, even though he's trying to get home. It's, it's more like... Uh, it's not your typical isekai, where he gets isekai and then they like just go to the guild, level up, or fight a demon king. He's even more direct, like less direction than that, right? Sure, he does join a guild, but very quickly after that, he helps an elf out and becomes friends with her. The stuff kind of goes down there, and he also doesn't necessarily care about the things that happens around him. Like, he'll just go into like a noble's house, uh, and just like fuck shit up or just like kill people who do bad stuff. It, it's, ah, uh, mm. I love when you have a strong like character who just takes no shit from people. It's just, ah, uh, so good. I love it. I love when like the main characters just destroy people who are bad and like need, leave nothing to question. So good. The one thing I do have to complain about this show is, however, is at times it does use CG animation, which is jarring to look at sometimes. It's, it doesn't seem like it happens much during like fight scenes and stuff. It happens a lot like, I've seen it where they'll be like walking towards like the, the camera perspective or stuff like that. Like, all of a sudden, it'll be, like, hand-drawn, and then uh, it'll transition real quickly to, like, some CG where they're walking or doing something motionful. 
and then it'll go back to like hand drawn or, or whatever the normal style is. And that's just kind of a little jarring and weird. The, the skeleton knight doesn't look too bad in CG, but since uh, the, the elf girl and other characters have more, uh, well, they have faces, I guess, and they have uh, more detail, I would want to say, it's very obvious when it happens to them. Not so much when it happens to the big knight guy, you know, because he like he's lumbering and big and doesn't have like a face that you look at. And so other than that, I, I've loved the show. The story has been great. It's, it's been pretty fucking poggers, if I do say so myself. Next up, we have Spy X Family, which is, let's just face it, it's everyone's favorite this season. It's the uh, adorable story of a spy who needs to get a family so he can assassinate a target by infiltrating a school for kids. Uh, and so he adopts a daughter who is a telepath and then gets a wife who's an assassin. But none of them know each other's secrets. So we got a spy, telepath child, and an assassin mother. And they're all very cute together, especially the daughter who uh, can hear their thoughts and has amazing, just, just amazing reactions. I gotta say. I have absolutely no complaints with this show. It is undoubtedly going to be the best anime this season. It's already like, God, what is it scored? It's scored like 9 out of 10 on uh, my anime list. Everyone loves it. It's been really cool watching them like sneak around and do stuff. And even though it's like obvious to like the normal person that, yeah, he's a spy and she's an assassin. When they're together doing stuff, like neither one of them like finds it obvious. So they're a really cute couple and it's a really cute show. They're a really cute family. And I hope at the end of it, um, even though the main character, uh, Twilight, manages to take down his uh, target, I, I really hope that he stays with his family and have a heavily ever after together that would just be really popular the last one we're talking about is summertime rendering this show is a fucking trip and i love it it's like it reminds me of like if steins gate and anohana had like a baby because there's like that that looping effect steins gate where when you, you you like go back to the past and do stuff I guess you're going to throw ReZero in there because he dies when he goes back to the past. And Anohana, where like there's uh, like this ghost of a girl who's trying to get the main character to do something uh, because that's what happens in summertime rendering. And so it's, it's man, the main character. He is going uh, back to town for his friend's funeral. And upon doing so, he discovers that there's like this, these things called shadows who are like killing and taking over people. And it is amazing. Like, it, it, it is, oof, just so good. I honestly have no complaints about this show either. Um, if I had to rank them, it would probably be number two. Number two this season. Uh, so far, that is. It, it maybe will take like a downward spiral or something, but the animation's good. The story and plot are just, ah, uh, to die for. The characters are really neat, fun, and uh, even though the main character looks like Kirito, uh, I'm letting that go because it's, it's fun. And I, uh, I enjoy that. That was another video, just uh, finishing the rendering process. Regard that little beep that y'all heard. But I, I quite enjoy summertime rendering, and uh, it, it's going to be pretty fun, but... <laughs> There are 25 episodes, so it's going to be like months before we talk about that one in completion. You dig? But we will talk about it when we do talk about it. Anyway, everyone, that is all that I have to say on these shows. I'm so looking forward to continuing to watch them and finish them. And next season is going to be just as great because I'm pretty sure... God, is that 
when Overlord's next season comes out, it is. It is when Overlord's next season comes out. Oh, before we end, I do want to say some other things. Because uh, I didn't do videos about them, but I am watching other anime, uh, like sequels, just stuff this comes out. I'm like Rising of Shield Hero. Second season of that came out. It's been okay. Um, I, I, I'll say I don't like it as much as the first one. But it has been quite action-packed and interesting as of, as of late. Although, Naofumi has been like very quiet. It's almost like he's a background character. <laughs> like, uh, other than to like tell people like what to do and to convince the leaders to like unify, um, he hasn't really said much. Which I think it was going that route in the first one. But, like, that's okay. I'm cool with it. I still enjoy it. All the characters are great. Reptali is back, being just adorable and cool, and I, I love her. So it's all good. Been great so far. Uh, Komi-san, uh, Can't Communicate, also has a second season coming out, which I'm watching. This one seems more romance than the previous season because uh, we're seeing uh, Komi and, I don't know, exchange blushed glances every once in a while now. And uh, that's all right in my book. I'm excited to see what happens between them. <clears throat> Um, I think, was there another one? Yeah, so there is a third season of Ascendance of a Bookworm, which, if you have not seen this, it's, it's a pretty great show. You might, like, have had it fly under your radar, but it's been great. It's about a story of a girl who uh, is a bookworm in her life, but dies because she gets crushed by books. It's sent to another world that does not have books, and so she determines she's going to make books herself. Even though she has kind of like a sickly body and stuff like that, she uh, sits upon trying to do various things to make books, and in the process, she ends up inventing other things like uh, decorative hairpins and um, soap, stuff like that. Very great, very great. I love the third season of it so far. It's been really, really cool. And I think that is everything. I'm just going to scroll through the list here real quick to make sure. And yeah, that's everything. Mm -hmm. That's everything that I'm watching. Perfect. So yeah, it's been a great season so far. I am, I'm, I'm loving it. And uh, it's, it's going to be great. So thank you all for listening. Until next time, I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.